Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell the comedians are going to succeed when they're younger because they have their own distinctive star. He certainly has that. He's very funny indeed. He's a rising comedy star. Please welcome Mr. James Acaster. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, good to see you all. Good to see you. I hope you've had a good day. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie, I've had a brilliant day. I shouldn't start on a boast, but it's been lush. <laughs> uh, got one of those telesales phone calls, you know, one of those ones when they say, this call may be recorded for training purposes. Mm. I don't want to count my chickens, but... Went really well. So. <laughs> Come on. I think they're going to use it. <laughs> I mean, who knows what happens next? I was, I'm a normal guy this week. This time next week, I could be a telesales celebrity. <laughs> my own little following, people who think my phone call's the best. I never know unless one of them walked past me in the street, recognised my voice and was like, Sorry. Are you exercise 17? <laughs> I'm a massive fan. Sign my neck. I might be like, sorry, mate, now's not a very convenient time. He'll be like, oh, that's exactly what you said in your phone call. <laughs> I can't believe you've done your catchphrase. <laughs> you've got to stand out if you want to be using telesales training. You've got to do something original that makes them go, Yeah. We need to train for this. <laughs> Someone like halfway through the phone call, out of nowhere, fake your own death. <laughs> really go for it. And make sure that they know you've faked it, that's very important. They can't actually believe that you're dead. Little rule in telesales, if they can still hear you breathing, they'll try and close the deal. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a massive fan of, of Pancake Day. Um, Shrove Tuesday, as it's known. I didn't know what Shrove meant, so I googled it. Found out that Shrove is the past tense for the English verb to shrive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> give you an example, give you an example. Hey, man. Want to shrive? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just shrove. <laughs> My favourite part of Pancake Day is the pancake flip. Uh, obviously, it's the most dramatic part. Nine times out of ten, you, 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 they get it wrong. It doesn't go very well. They don't gain enough height on the pancake. The pancake kind of panics in midair. <laughs> Falls back in the pan a mess. It's been a disaster. And the person who's done it, uh, the flipper, they always have to say the same thing. Always have to turn to everyone and go, don't worry, don't worry. I'll eat that one. <laughs> and even though they've been making us pancakes all evening, we let them take the punishment. Because it's the only way they'll learn. I hate it when you forget Pancake Day, don't you? Oh, my God, it's the worst. <laughs> you don't realise until the next morning, you wake up, go downstairs, open your front door, someone walks past, hey, James, happy Ash Wednesday. Fuck! <laughs> hey, Ash Wednesday. <laughs> Easily the worst day of the calendar year. With all my heart, I hate it. Now I can't eat that many pancakes without feeling guilty about it. Got to wait until it's socially acceptable again. You want to do what I did last year, I forgot about Pancake Day, but then in the summer I went to a music festival. They had a crepe stand there. <laughs> you guys know what crepes are, right? <laughs> Undercover pancakes. <laughs> it's like, yes, I've had a loophole in your face, Christians. <laughs> I'm about to do some out-of-season shriving, nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Walk 
walked up to the counter, got myself a Nutella crepe on a paper plate. They gave me a wooden fork to eat it with, with like smooth, rounded off prongs. I don't know if you've ever tried to penetrate a pancake with one of these things. <laughs> it's impossible. Every thruster wasn't even breaking the skin. Every time I pushed against the crepe, the paper plate would bend with the force. It wasn't giving me a solid surface to work on. As I was there struggling, I looked over at the lady who had sold it to me. She was looking back at me as if to say, Did you really think it was going to be that easy? <laughs> Touché, Christians. <laughs> Touché. This will this surprise a lot of you. Um, I went on a lad's night out recently. <laughs> um, probably won't surprise you to learn I only knew one of the lads. Um, <laughs> my friend Douglas. Um, we don't call him Douglas, though. He's got a nickname given to him once. We're walking past a pub late at night. There's a drunk old man just sat outside the front of the pub. As Douglas walked past, the old man just went, Yeah. <laughs> you keep on walking. <laughs> you little bitch. <laughs> out of nowhere and unprovoked, I want to add. Douglas turned around and went, what did you call me? The man went, little B-I-T-S. <laughs> so Little Bits is one of my best mates. And <laughs> we were... I'm in the pub. It was me and him and a bunch of his mates. His friend Lewis hadn't arrived yet, so one of his friends went, where's Lewis? I decided to make a joke. Now, this is quite a common joke. A lot of people in this room will have made it. It's never recommended. I wouldn't advise it. Uh, they went, where's Lewis? And I went, oh, I don't know, probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you make that joke, the first thing you think is, well, I hope that hasn't happened. <laughs> going to feel horrendous. <laughs> Why does anyone ever make a joke like that? Has anyone ever made that kind of joke? And people have even laughed, let alone to the point they've been rolling around on the floor, just convulsing with laughter, tears streaming, high-fiving each other because of how brilliant your joke was, that you think to yourself, well, even if he is dead, <laughs> this is worth it. <laughs> now I can't relax until Lewis arrives. Um, imagine all sorts of awful things, like opening up the newspaper the next morning, reading an article, it says, Lewis, 27, was found dead in a ditch this morning. Family and friends describe him as a loving and caring individual who brought light into the lives of everyone he met. Lewis was on his way to the pub, where comedian James Acaster <laughs> had already started to make light of the tragedy. <laughs> in a statement released this morning, Acaster said, I had no idea Lewis was actually dead. I just thought it would be pretty funny if he was. <laughs> This isn't the first time Acaster's joked about mortality. He was recorded just the other week faking his own death during a phone call with British <laughs> Gas. <laughs> Police are currently using the recording for training purposes. <laughs> You've been a pleasure to talk to. I'll see you later. Good night. Thank you.